Hello, good evening, everyone. And different platform, we are in Zoom and YouTube and Facebook Live. Uh, we'd like to have uh, this lovely meeting uh, webinars with Mohammed Saif, his electrical engineering. Uh, I'll, I'll let the floor for Mohammed to introduce himself more. And we know about the microgrids uh, webinar. Thank you, Dr. Ali. <laughs> yeah, with you today, uh, Mohammed Saif from Egypt. I'm electrical uh, power engineer. I'm working at uh, electricity transmission company, Egypt. And uh, I'm really interested in the field of uh, power and energy. So I became one of the IEEE EPS members. And uh, I would like today to share with you some uh, information about uh, this trending technology. And um, actually in my life, I am not very, very technical, but I'm practical with uh, the power engineering. So I started to work with the Egyptian electricity transmission company as electrical engineer in high voltage transmission substations. And um, it was a great uh, chance for me to know about many, many fields like uh, control, automation, and um, the, uh, actually the switch gear and so on. And also um, the DCS, a distributed control system, SCADA systems and the uh, protection system. So I knew about this trending microgrids. I started to make research for this about uh, microgrid and found an interesting topic in uh, IEEE electrification magazine about microgrids, which will be uh, the transformation from uh, the traditional uh, grid, electricity grid, to the new one, which is microgrids. It's no about microgrids now. I will talk about some, um, uh, you can say, uh, concepts, uh, basics about microgrids. Then we will see an example about um, a, a pilot project in Sweden. So it will be like a practical way to understand these concepts. Let's get started. Now we need to know why do we need the microgrid? As we know before about microprocessors, microprocessor it's like a tiny uh, thing used uh, as a processor for many many electronic devices. So micro the other terminology is. Uh, referring that uh, it's a tiny thing uh, will be used for a great purpose, mm, like uh, a microprocessor for electronics, the microgrid for electricity grid, of course. So we have mainly three reasons to have microgrids. The first one is the environmental and economical benefit. Actually, the environmental mainly means that uh, we reduce the uh, pollution in the atmosphere that we uh, actually uh, noticed during the pandemic um, while the factories started to reduce the number of hours of working and uh, the number of cars in the streets we saw that uh, the um, pollution reduced uh, significantly and uh, the second one is economical benefits so about environmental benefits. So I will talk about one thing again, which is uh, the process of re reducing, uh, producing the uh, renewable energy sources must be also green, must be uh, put uh, the CO2 emission reduction in its uh, production way. It should be uh, helping the environment uh, during producing the renewable energy resources also. In order to have a great impact to the environment, to be, uh, in order to have a, a process of production, let, having a, a few two emissions less than the normal uh, power generation process can do, okay? And also the economical benefits, as you may know about this benefit, uh, when you have an installation for PV system or something like that at your roof, 
uh, you can get revenue from the government. It will be a great thing for you. And uh, also, sometimes it could be used uh, for um, uh, charging electric cars in some countries. So number two is the CO2 emission as a target could be reduced by 5% by uh, 2030 because it's a, a direction and way for the sustainable development. Also number three, which is very important, the network demands, which is the main purpose from creating any electricity grid, which is um, satisfying the uh, needs of the load, the electricity loads. So we have increasing uh, needs from electricity in many countries, and uh, we need to satisfy this need uh, in the grid. So microgrids is very important. It could be combination between renewable energy resources, which is RES here. Okay, um, you can have uh, paper and uh, pen to write some abbreviations. And uh, RES is the renewable energy sources, uh, which is based on DG, DG abbreviated for distributed generation, could be solar panels, could be a diesel generator, could be thermal cell, and so on. You will see. And also with the uh, energy uh, storage systems. Okay. It could help very much. So we can see now the topology of the microgrid. We can have uh, two uh, types of uh, microgrids, which are AC microgrid and DC microgrid. Okay. Uh, it's obvious uh, the main uh, difference between AC and DC microgrid, which is the current, alternating current, or DC current. You can see here um, the topology of main uh, microgrid, which combines both of them. Uh, we have uh, in the right the AC microgrid, and at the left the DC microgrid combined here with DC AC converter. And here we have um, the energy management uh, system uh, or abbreviated with EMS. It's like a brain of this system to have signals from everywhere to have decisions to, uh, um, to disconnect or connect anything in this uh, microgrid. Okay, so we, we have here a wind turbine connected to this grid the DC bus uh, through AC-DC converter and the solar, of course, you know, solar panels produce DC uh, power. So it's connected here with DC-DC converter and also the fuel cell, DC-DC converter, the energy storage system also we have. Okay, and here in the AC uh, microgrid, we have here the normal grid and the transformer to um, feed uh, the power to uh, loads. And here also we need this connection. All dotted lines are um, connections like communication, communication to take signal about uh, how much we have here loads needed. So we need to satisfy all these loads uh, instantaneously. So we will start with the DC microgrid, it's a very important uh, and used in marine systems and automotive and uh, manufacturing. And also in the low voltage level, we have um, like extra high voltage, high voltage, medium voltage, and low voltage. Um, there are the, the, the levels of voltage in the power system. So uh, DC microgrid is usually used in the uh, low voltage level. Uh, it's one of the uh, disadvantages of the normal grid is the fluctuations in voltage and frequency. So the DC microgrid um, make this uh, uh, solved by reducing the power loss 
reducing the voltage drop and also increasing the line capacity. I think you know about uh, the skin effect for the uh, wires. It's all about uh, the current, mm. current and pass through the wire in the surface only when we use AC current. And when we use DC current, it's uh, passing through the whole cross section area. So we have a um, uh, possibility to use all the cross section area and pass uh, so much uh, current in it with the same cross section area. So it increases the line capacity in transmission. And also, DC microgrid could be used for um, transmission line. Uh, between two countries, like uh, in, in Egypt, we have a project to, to connect uh, the electricity between Egypt and uh, Saudi Arabia um, by DC uh, system, DC high voltage system, uh, because we have different frequencies. So in, in, in Egypt, we have 50 hertz and Saudi Arabia 60 hertz. So we need to uh, convert this. Uh, electricity power from AC to DC, and then we transmit it in DC form. And then in the other side in Saudi Arabia, it will be uh, converted again from DC to AC use different uh, frequency. So we have three uh, types of DC uh, microgrid connections, monopolar and bipolar and homopolar to do this uh, mission. Monopolar, here you can see uh, negative, uh, let's say, negative emission uh, from the fire resistors, like um, uh, starting the, the current. And then uh, the, the, positive, um, the positive come from the earth, as you see. This is the, the monopolar link. And we have the bipolar link, which is most popular and we use it usually. Uh, we have positive direction and negative direction. So we have circulating current in the whole circuit and there is no current passing through the earth. Okay, so we can connect any device between uh, the positive and negative connection of bipolar and there is no uh, problem here. And also we have the homopolar uh, which is um, having a large uh, current passing through the uh, earth, which is, could be used in other uh, applications. Mainly we use uh, the bipolar connection here, okay, because it has many, many advantages, especially uh, in the low voltage level. As I said before, we usually use the DC uh, microgrid in this level, okay. The second uh, type of DC uh, of, of microgrid is the AC microgrid, which is similar to DC microgrid, but with um, different kind of uh, current. <clears throat> the AC microgrid here, you can connect solar panels also and wind and uh, storage energy with batteries, with uh, converters, uh, DC to AC, converter to connect uh, to the AC bus. And here also we have uh, the DC loads and AC loads. The DC loads could be uh, fed from AC to DC converter, and the AC load could be uh, fed from AC AC converter. So I think you have a question about this, why we use, uh, like here, DC DC converter, while solar panel can produce uh, DC power and we need to connect it with DC bus. So why we use DC DC converter? And here also this wind turbine connected to AC bus. So we connect it through AC AC converter. The main reason is that we use this uh, converter to uh, control the frequency and voltage, not only to transfer the power from form to another. No, it's used for um, regulation mainly. 
okay? So we have here the AC microgrid um, mainly used in the middle uh, level, we can say the medium voltage uh, level in the electricity grid because it is connected directly to the uh, medium voltage grid, uh, not like the DC microgrid that needs uh, to be nearby the customers. So we have also different types of uh, AC microgrid. We have uh, coupled and decoupled. The coupled AC microgrid is connected directly to the grid um, through maybe transformer like this. And um, we have here the main grid circuit breaker. It could be here as a transformer. And uh, this point called here, called the point of common coupling, which is uh, collecting all the renewable energy resources there. And we have the second type, which is decoupled AC microgrid, which is like I said to you before, if we have different countries with different uh, frequencies and we need to make a connection, interconnection between these two uh, grids. So we need to have decoupled AC microgrid to uh, try to make uh, this connection. So um, let's start with the Simris project to, um, to apply all these uh, concepts on the project. We have a project pilot project in uh, southern Sweden. I got this uh, view from Google map. I didn't find it in the magazine. Um, actually, all this uh, topic uh, came from uh, Electrification Magazine, and I found it very interesting. So I read uh, uh, little chapters from another book to describe it uh, precisely and uh, to know about these details, which I uh, which I made in the introduction. The whole introduction came from another book. But the, um, the project came from the Electrification Magazine, um, the edition in November uh, 2018. So here, the pilot project in Sweden, we have obvious, uh, we have uh, solar panels here, we have uh, wind turbine, and also we must have uh, energy storage system. <clears throat> here is another view. You can see here the panels the uh, battery system, the wind turbine, the substation, it, it was here. Um, we need to know about, uh, I want to, yeah. Here is the connection of the grid. Okay, here is the uh, substation. We have 20, 22 kilovolts to 10 kilovolts transformer in this substation, it's called the main substation. And here we have, uh, like we can call it ring connection for the uh, customers, 150 customer. And um, we have again, uh, another substation for the uh, renewable energy resources, could be called uh, distributed energy resources uh, substation connected with the wind turbine, the BV panels, and the diesel generator, and also the uh, battery system. Can go back. Okay, here is the uh, overview of the uh, project, all components of this, because the project in Semiris uh, created on the existing grid in Sweden. And uh, it form like a, a local energy source, okay? So they can disconnect from the main grid at any time they want. The main purpose and objective, which is satisfying all the loads in Semris uh, project. Number one, we have the energy management system. It's very important to have this system to uh, control the all of the system uh, to have uh, signals from everywhere, like I saw you here uh, with the dotted red line. 
here EMS, the Energy Management System, in the main substation, which called uh, the BCC, which is the point of common coupling. Okay. And here also in the uh, DER or uh, distributed energy resources substation, and also in the battery uh, system. Okay. So we have connections. When uh, any problem happened to the main grids, uh, this microgrid can be disconnected. In this case, we call it uh, eye landing mode. Okay, so number one is the energy management system. And we saw where is the energy management system in the uh, single line diagram. Um, also the BESS, which is the battery energy storage system. Um, yeah. The battery energy storage system uh, with capacity 333 kilowatt hour and peak power 800 kilowatt. This system is mainly used to satisfy all the uh, load needs when there is uh, no sufficient uh, power come from the solar panels and uh, wind turbines. <clears throat> so here we have the DR substation. Okay, the DR substation, as I told you before, here, this one, the DR substation, built next to the existing wind turbine and BV plants. Okay, and fully equipped with communication to be connected to the uh, energy management system, of course, and the protective relays to protect its device and control systems to be uh, connected to the uh, local energy uh, system. So um, in the emergency case, we have to uh, use the diesel backup generator <clears throat> with 480 kilowatts rated power. Uh, we will see its uh, performance, uh, next slide. And also we have something interesting, which is uh, the demand side response. What do you think it could be? Demand side response. So we have here a response from the demand. Mainly we make this grid to satisfy the demand of the load. So how the, the demand can respond to be part of this grid. So it's amazing part of the microgrid, it's intelligence uh, that it collect um, the information from all the components of the grid and then take decisions through the EMS, the energy management system. So in this case, maybe in the uh, peak, the peak period when we need a lot of energy more than we consume, the uh, demand side response platform get this information and give rules to the customers to to pay some uh, rules to to make uh, to reduce this product uh, to, pre to produce uh, some uh, actions to reduce the consumption okay uh, Sometimes the consumption is not very critical and not very important, could be uh, trimmed by this uh, platform by collecting all information. Okay, um, we'll see next slide that um, it could prevent uh, full charging for electric vehicles. If we connect electric vehicle at home, we need to charge it. So it will not start the uh, charging this electric vehicle uh, till the peak period ends. Or it could charge the electric vehicle also, but with low voltage, not um, with high rate voltage. Okay, all of that uh, happened because of the DSR, the demand side response. So the microgrid used this platform to take actions, through the customer to have a load balance. 
so here uh, the in the similar uh, project we can uh, connect or disconnect this microgrid uh, through the uh, the EMS control we have here a local wind turbine we have a BV plant we have rooftop BV installation also uh, at homes we have rooftop BV installations uh, which form this microgrid and uh, here is the, the voltage level 10 kilovolt uh, distribution level and uh, we have seven substations in this uh, village all of them working in this uh, voltage level 10 uh, to 0.4 kilovolt here is the uh, the connection from the grid 10 kilovolt and this one to go to the customer okay which which converts uh 0.4 kilovolt which means 400 volt it is around uh, 380 volt um, with some voltage drop and uh, this is for three phase and we have in the in our houses um uh, 220 volt just single phase okay which is the normal case as uh, every house okay to supply 150 customers so here in the the feed point feed point here this point the substation is 20 to to 10 kilovolt substation okay but also with circuit breaker voltage uh, voltage and the current uh, transformer voltage transformer to measure the voltage and the current transformer to measure the uh, the current force and protection devices to protect it from over current from um, short circuit and so on many kinds also we have here the components of the system fully here we talked about the central battery, EMS, wind turbine, BV, uh, backup generator, substations, DSR. We have here description and the manufacturer. Okay. And also we have heat pumps, water boilers, uh, the residential BV and battery. As I told you before, uh, we mm, consider it as a part of the microgrid. And also the immobility. So we, you can charge your uh, uh, electric car from this uh, grid and the smart meters, of course, to um, connect it to the microgrid and take the decisions in, uh, in the form of um, the demand side response. Okay, it's the main uh, part of this connection. Okay. So here, um, the main uh, advantage of this microgrid is the ability to be disconnected anytime. And also, it's very important to know that it's called eye landing mode. Here, the operation is very important to, to know that the battery energy storage system is very important in this uh, microgrid because when you disconnect yourself from the uh, the main grid so mm, you have an instantaneous power come from maybe the, the solar panel at the daytime and uh, at night you have no power come from the bv uh, source so you have only the wind turbine and the uh, storage energy in the batteries and you can use the um, diesel generator in any uh, circumstances urgently okay so you need to uh, make great concentration on the uh, battery system so we have here uh, control components for the battery energy storage system PESS and three uh, components the battery management system which is very important to uh, estimate the state of a charge of the battery system and uh, make decisions to have good limits of operation 
for the battery. And also we have the PCS, which is the, the power control system uh, inverter, which is very important to, to, uh, to be responsible for high, um, high frequency or high speed uh, switching processes for the electronic devices during the different uh, states of operation. Could be grid connected or uh, islanded, and you will see another new um, invented uh, state, which is the virtual islanding. And the last component is the battery system control. The battery system control is very important to be responsible of uh, converting the, the battery from mm, transition from a state to another, which is charging, discharging. They are uh, responsible, the controller is responsible for changing the states of the electric battery uh, from charging and discharging modes. Here is the battery energy storage system component. <clears throat> we talked about the, the battery management system, okay, and the uh, power control system. Um, it's very important here, and uh, we talked about also the battery system control. Uh, here, the, the battery system control. It controls every uh, step. Okay, so we have here uh, the battery system. Um, we can erase this. <clears throat> okay, the batteries here we have seven units. Okay, and uh, we have five units from this uh, BCS, the power control system. And of course, we connect it to a transformer here. This transformer uh, sorry. This transformer, as you notice, it's delta delta connected here, delta delta connected. This is uh, we go to the uh, D E. R, okay, the distributed energy resources substation. So we have here connection, delta delta connection. Uh, it's very important to eliminate any harmonics come from all of these electronic components before it uh, to make an isolation uh, from the, uh, the grid, okay, which can affect mainly the power quality of the system. We have here uh, the first mode. Of course, we know the grid connected, the, the usual uh, mode. And we have the virtual eye landing mode. Virtual eye landing mode by uh, E.ON company. This company from Germany uh, invented this uh, amazing uh, mode of operation, which is like uh, you are connected to the grid, but you are not connected. <laughs> so it's virtual, like uh we will see now the ems which is the energy management system controls the active and reactive power the active power which is p and the reactive power uh q okay to make them uh like there is no change between the microgrid and the main grid okay through the the bcc so there is no power go from the SEMRIS to the local uh, electricity grid, and no power come from the grid to uh, SEMRIS, okay? This is the first step here. The EMS control the, the B and Q, the active and reactive power, to uh, set points to the uh, battery energy storage system to have no to change curves over the point of common coupling. In this case, the BCS, which is the controller, okay, in the battery energy storage system, it com operates in the current source inverter mode as a, a grid follower. The current source inverter mode, um, in summary, it's used uh, mainly 
during the state when you can um, uh, return the power or the energy, you can return the energy to the source. It's very important here, the current source converter mode. And uh, it could be also happen with the voltage source inverter mode, but uh, in voltage source inverter mode, you need um, another converter to do that uh, with the uh, voltage source converter mode. So we use the current source inverter mode. And uh, the balancing of the uh, loads happened uh, during the peak load hours. Okay, so in this scenario, the, uh, the local energy source provides ancillary service, which is you are connected to the grid and the circuit breaker here, the circuit breaker here is closed and everything fine, you are connected to the grid, but you are not exchanging any power between uh, this community and the grid, okay? That's why they call it virtual uh, islanding. And we have here the normal one, which is the intentional islanding mode. So we cut off the power between the uh, Semiris project and the utility. The power system controller BCS runs this time in the voltage source inverter mode. And voltage source inverter mode is very important. Uh, and we can prefer it than the current source inverter mode when we have a high dynamic in the system. Now we are going to uh, be alone. We are isolating our microgrid from the grid. So we will have dy high dynamics. You know, the, the, the whole grid gets its um, stability from the rotating machine in it. Like um, the, all the generators in the, the grid, uh, it could be in by gas, combustion, uh, combined cycle, every rotating machine generating the electricity can make this stability for the grid. So when you are isolated from this grid, uh, you have different uh, calculations. Um, yeah. So uh, in this case, we are in grid forming unit. So the physical uh, islanding system could be happen when you also try to make the, the active power and reactive power is equal zero at the point of common coupling, okay? To be near by zero. And in this case, you can disconnect and switch on the circuit breaker and isolate and isolate this system from the main grid. Okay. In this case, the EMS, the energy management system, also get information about the grid, uh, the power, the active power and the active power and set another values for the frequency and voltage, okay? To keep it like a target like here, 10.7 kilovolt and 50 hertz power. <clears throat> okay, and also we have um, objective functions. Um, mainly, you know, we have uh, like optimal power flow. We have uh, many calculations to have um, uh, the load balance and so on, we need to uh, work on objective function. What is our objective from these calculations and algorithms? It should be uh, minimizing the operation cost, of course, and minimizing the losses, yeah, and minimizing the power exchange between our grid and the main grid, and also uh, maximizing the islanding, islanding time. Okay, that's why <clears throat> we use a uh, large battery. That's why we have a diesel generator for, for backup to increase the islanding time as we can. <clears throat> we will see here uh, these two cases. 
uh, this first one. And here is the second one. Okay. <clears throat> Mainly here, this uh, blue curve about the frequency. You can see here the, the legend, the frequency with blue curve here. And uh, the, the down curve is about all the power. The light green <clears throat> for the wind and BV uh, source. And uh, the dark green <clears throat> is from the battery. And this yellow one uh, for the uh, backup generator. And in this case, the first point here at 11.8 uh, and a half, <clears throat> what happened here? Uh, before this, we have here some uh, problems here in power and it decreases. The wind maybe have a low wind speed, so the power decreased here. So we have like an image. You see here, like an image happened by uh, order of the EMS to make the battery increase its power injected to the grid to uh, make uh, to keep the load balanced. Okay, so in this uh, moment, the battery decreased uh, lower than the uh, minimum level, which here here is the the battery control. Here is a residential battery control, okay? Uh, in this point here, okay, 30 degrees, and here 70 percentage, they are the, the main points, the limit. If the, uh, uh, the main battery has state of a charge, the, 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 the charging remaining in it, lower than 30 percentage, like maybe here, like this. So the decision should be discharging. What will be discharged? The batteries in the residential, okay? So all of the effort in the microgrid should be gone to, the, uh, to charge the main battery, discharging the batteries of um, the houses, which also called uh, the demand side response. Well, the energy management system gave this order to the houses, uh, the battery in the houses to discharge, to charge the main battery. Also, we have here an other action. This uh, backup generator will uh, switch it on to uh, maintain this decrease in power. Due to this entry, the uh, generator uh, switched on. So the, the frequency, sorry, the frequency increased slightly here. And then it comes down to remain uh, within the limit with uh, 50 hertz. All of this control happened by the EMS. And also after three minutes, around three minutes, uh, the wind turbine tripped, it cut off. So in this instant, the frequency decreased slightly also because we lost a rotating machine. In this point here, the first case, we enter a rotating machine. So the frequency increased and then here, when we lost the rotating machine, the frequency dropped, uh, decreased. And also what uh, re return this uh, curve back to around 50 hertz, which is the EMS, the energy management system. It's vital component in the uh, microgrid. So here we have also small notes here because of the inertia of the uh, rotating machine, which is the, the wind turbine. When wind turbine uh, tripped, suddenly the uh, diesel generator have like a little jump here, 
and come back again to its normal uh, power fed to the grid. And at the same point, at the same time, the uh, energy management system gives an order for the battery to come back, to be connected. Could be maybe like uh, if you have the, the mobile phone with high uh, charger and uh, the mobile phone uh, lower limit is around 30 degrees, uh, 30 percentage, and uh, it decreases to 29 percentage. It would be like uh, a control and you put it in the charger, high, high speed charger for three minutes maybe. So it would be become from uh, 29 uh, percentage to 32 percentage maybe. So in the control uh, vision, you are not in the lower level like, like here. Here 30, you become 32. So you are, you are okay, you can get in again, okay? Especially in this case, you lost uh, a large uh, generating uh, source like wind turbine. So you need to give all the need, uh, the needed power to the grid. This is the number one priority in the microgrid to uh, keep the load balance, okay? So we have, here, nice operation, you see, uh, with the, uh, the battery. Uh, not like this. Oh, here also like an image between the wind turbine and the battery. There is no uh, like uh, smooth uh, operation. Not like in the right side. Here we have uh, like straight line here. That's why the, the wind turbine make some changes suddenly because of the changes instantaneously of the, the wind speed. So it should be met instantaneously uh, uh, by uh, the other devices in the microgrid, like the battery. So here also they connected uh, some uh, measuring. In the, the right side here, is the, uh, the frequency, okay? The frequency uh, of the grid, the main grid. And in the left side, we have here the frequency of uh, the microgrid. During the time from around, uh, around eight or nine, maybe you can say about nine to, 8 bm. Uh, we have different shape of frequency. We have smooth uh, shape of frequency. We have little bit uh, notches here, but mainly it's better than here at the same time. <laughs> the grid was suffering. <laughs> Could be, uh, I think the microgrid is very, very happy <laughs> in this situation. And also, during this time between nine and uh, eight, here we have uh, the shape of voltage. We can say it's voltage profile, okay? It's smooth also, <laughs> more than here. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> so the microgrid is very happy. <laughs> and uh, this is because of the DSR platform, <laughs> the, uh, the, the demand side response. So here is the, the platform connection, mainly connects all the components here. MG, which is the microgrid controller, connected to the DSR, and we have smart meters, BV battery system, and also the uh, heat bumps and hot water boilers and electric vehicles charging. Now we will talk a little about the electric vehicle charging, which can provide a nice way uh, of uh, producing uh, energy to the grid. So uh, 
can be source of flexibility to support penetration of renewable energy to supply this uh, energy uh, stored in the battery of the electric vehicle at the time when the grid needs, especially in the peak hours. So it, it happened with the steerable electric vehicle supply equipment. It can control the behavior of the electric vehicle. Here is the point that uh, I was telling you about. Uh, when you connect your electric vehicle and uh, the situation in the uh, microgrid not responding very well, it would be uh, because of the, uh, the the state of charge of the main battery. Here we have the state of charge of the main battery here and the charging current for the electric vehicle. If the state of charge of the electric vehicle here, we can say, Okay, so the current could be one, uh, could be 10 amps, around 33 of the maximum charging current. So it will take a longer time to be fully charged. Or here, if we can see here, if the uh, main battery has a power lower than uh, 20 percentage, so the action would be no charging it will prevent any charging operation okay so this is the intelligence here <laughs> in the microgrid so finally the conclusion from from all of this uh, uh, project and uh, uh, experimental work is to believe that the uh, the opportunity uh, came back to the industry. The local energy sources would become an important and powerful opportunity for the uh, energy industry to have an impact in the grid. And also it can be cost effective integration by using the renewable energy resources rather than the conventional ways. And also it could be a step forward for a new way of uh, grid and new transformation uh, transformation for new way of uh, grid in Europe also. Uh, we hope it can be uh, discussed in our uh, in our countries like Middle East countries, but we have mainly some problems like uh, the infrastructure it should be improved to meet the needs of these uh, smart grids and microgrids. So uh, the references was like um, a microgrid field trial in Sweden from IEEE Electrification Magazine. And also I searched for more details about this uh, topic in the integrated renewable energy sources with group control techniques based on microgrid operation. And if you are IEEE PES member, you can freely download the electrification magazine and you can also search for many, many topics about uh, your interest uh, in the IEEE Resource Center. You can search here and download it free if you are IEEE PS member. And thank you very much. And um, I hope you are um, get some benefit from this uh, about basic knowledge about uh, microgrid and this project in Simris. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mohammed, for this uh, beneficial uh, presentation. Uh, we you. will now uh, time anyone if they have any questions uh, from attendee in all social media, um, Zoom or Facebook or YouTube. Okay. Let's see if there is any uh, 
it means that they are understand everything or not yeah. understand anything. <laughs> so I hope they understand every point, which is mainly basics and uh, points about the project. And I hope we <laughs> can achieve some, yeah. When you said that uh, we, we can uh, have some benefit from it in our, especially in the region, um, Africa and Middle East. Yeah, sure. Is there any like regulation should be done uh, to, to do it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> the, uh, it needs um, in, mainly in the Middle East uh, and uh, Egypt, of course, I know that uh, there's some regulation uh, started to uh, work for um, feed-in tariff, uh, you, which means that uh, if you have a solar panel or wind farm, if you are an investor, you can connect it to the grid and you can get revenue from it. Um, yeah, depending on the, the, the amount of energy you transfer, and uh, the service, of course, uh, because mainly the grid needs some services, like uh, during the peak hour, uh, the grid needs more injection uh, from many resources, uh, renewable energy resources, especially. And uh, if you can provide this, you will get some uh, benefits uh, from the grid. <clears throat> it could be mainly a decrease in the electricity bill, annual <laughs> electricity bill mainly for the factories and so on. Yeah, it must be like this. And uh, in our countries, we need to develop more in the infrastructure, which I mean infrastructure like smart meters, <laughs> um, electric uh, cables could be... Um, um, provided with some connection lines not only dummy cables <laughs> so yeah. we need some effort um, in egypt we have um, the new capital project uh, it provides with uh, new technologies could be a great example for the world to be um, a smart city yeah could be yeah we start in, in, I talk about my country in Kuwait, we have some uh, a solar panel uh, farm, they, they do it, they call it Shigaya. And uh, we have some, so it's like, just like kind of trial, they're trying to send from uh, Kuwait uh, investment uh, companies, they send uh, solar panels for people who are willing to do. But we, we have problem that we have uh, ACs working, the air conditioning uh, working, <laughs> all, all so that consuming a lot of power. Uh, some people trying to find some solution with the kind of uh, uh, green energy that can power this uh, air conditioning, uh, but I'm not sure if it will be yeah. successful or not. Yeah. The main solution could be uh, um, inventing kind of uh, air conditioning consumes the energy in different way, not 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 like uh, the normal AC. <laughs> so it could be like um, you know when the uh, BV uh, technology start to spread in the world. Uh, at the same time, there was the LED technology, so it consumes low power. And also mm, could be like uh, like the illumination, the illumination of the uh, the light, the same illumination, but different power. Yeah. So we need to work on the mm, developing the applications which use the power to be uh, to be nice <laughs> with the power consumption. <laughs> and we have other questions from like. Get yeah, in? we have we have what? a question. What are the major challenges experienced with uh, microgrids? Yeah, uh, the major challenges is great question. Um, uh, 
Yeah, sure. There are many, sure, many, many challenges like uh, the satisfying the needs of the, uh, the customers and uh, keeping in the constraints like you see in here, eight minutes. Uh -huh. We have here some variations. You have to uh, be fast acting uh, during these fast variations. And uh, mainly is uh, spreading this idea to make it uh, a way of living in many countries, not only small projects. It's one of the challenges to spread the, this idea. Uh, it needs many regulations in countries. It will change many things like uh, the devices. You need to take care about uh, devices, especially I mean the uh, protection devices, which protect every component in the system. It, it needs uh, improvement in the protection devices. Especially we have here, one second. Uh, I uh, I got uh, the new edition of the Power and Energy magazine, and uh, I found this interesting topic here, which is the microgrid protection. I think you see this now, or wait. Uh -huh. I think you see it now. Um, the the new edition of power and energy magazine it's talking about the microgrid protection which is vital point uh, which needs many improvements which is a big challenge in the uh, microgrid uh, field protection devices and also as i said before the devices itself you need to work on the devices to consume a power in such way uh, to, to give a higher power quality. That's the main thing, the main challenge in the microgrid. <clears throat> so I uh, advise you to see this magazine. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. someone yeah i think uh reach uh, oh. the end of this uh, webinar we'd like to thank yeah. you for this beneficial presentation and hope to see you uh, soon in person <laughs> after thank this you. over thank uh, you dr ali thank you have a nice night thank, thank you very much thank you i think one last question for you. What is ah, the best okay. way to use the power and grids? Ah. What is the best upgrade development in the field of power and grids? Um, the best in these years. Uh, the best upgrade. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? <laughs> Okay, the best upgrade uh, needed to increase the number of uh, uh, smart meters and to try to make uh, every house or not every house, we can uh, try to make the, some of the universities and uh, parking parks, parks to be a source of uh, renewable energy would be an upgrade in the, the, the grid. And uh, Especially, as I told before, the cables must be uh, provided with communication and also the, the, the smart meters at home. It could give uh, the information to the grid control center about the condition of every consumer. Uh, so it would be helpful for them to take the right decisions in every moment. So it could be the development in this uh, steps. That's why the, the microgrid uh, mainly concentrate on 
the, the low voltage level, the customer to be nearby the customer at home or um, in um, nearby nearby the, the customer very much in order also to decrease the, the bar loss in the transmission lines and so on. So the main development or upgrade should be in the infrastructure, which is the cables, the, the, the meters, which is should be smart meters and so on. Yeah, thank you for this question. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. Thank Here's you, one. thank you, Thank you in this meeting. Thanks a lot. Oh, you are welcome. Uh, good night, good morning. For <laughs> if there is anyone in different time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.